Ethan Wilson, snowboard cross athlete extraordinaire, Olympic, Winter Olympic hopeful. Hopeful. Yep. Do you call it a hopeful or is it a guarantee for you in your mind? Ha! Um, well, no. Because Cause nothing guaranteed. nothing's guaranteed. Yep. Good, wait, can I start you off with a quote? Please. Are we on? All right. So, a book I've been reading, um, one of my favorite books of all time. What's that? Oh, I don't know if I want to tell you the title. I think you should. Should I? Well, tell us the quote at least. Okay, I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the quote. The quote is, um, yesterday's left us, tomorrow's not guaranteed. Therefore, the only moment is now in the present. So That's right. And that's for, the, for just before we started recording, I mm. went downstairs to... Oh, uh, are we not recording? Or we are recording? Oh, bro, we're live. Oh, good, good. We are going straight to the, the, the satellites in the sky. I'm beaming <laughs> this back down to people's devices right now. Uh. No, but w- I went to left, leave the room before we started recording. Mm. And uh, I came back in and I see Ethan Wilson in a trance, just looking ahead. I would have gone for about a minute or two and he was just looking ahead, doing nothing. And I'm like, whoa, this motherfucker's Zen Buddhist out. He is namaste out. And because what do you do when someone leaves the room? You pick up, oh shit, the device. I gotta, I'm so, I gotta put this in airplane mode. They're boom, boom, fuck that device. You got they go to the, we go to the device to distract us. Well, I can't sit alone with my thoughts. No. Too scary, that too, is. Exactly, it's too scary. For most. Most yes, people. but you got to confront what is scary. And so you entered a zen-like state and I saw aura coming around you and with almost for five, five seconds, you became a god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Why'd you do that? I don't know, just preparing for this. Okay. Living, living in the here and the now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it goes to that quote. Yeah. It literally is that quote. You're right. living it. Exactly. And you know what? That's perfect because usually people just talk, talk, and they don't know how to walk the walk. No, you know that? Uh, that's it. Is it the Migo song? Walk it? Okay, talk it. Have you heard of that? Yeah, I have. Right? I never realized exactly. that that song, it was just catchy. I wasn't even really listening. Yeah. Oh, he's got to walk it like he talks it because you've got to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. That's it. I've listened to that song about 50 times. I just got it. That's it. I'm a bit slow. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you. That's about, yeah. That's what it's about. You know, don't need, why, do, why do I need the phone? I'm not. Yeah. What am I? What am I about to do? What am I doing now? Podcast with Alex, sitting in the chair. Absolutely, I'm breathing. Locked in, in. out, in, in the spaceship. Out. Um, but before, also, we started recording. You mentioned something about uh, during this time you have been learning. You have been using this time to your advantage. Can you elaborate on what you were about to say? Yeah, I can. Um, when I got back from the US, obviously I had two weeks um, in self-isolation because of the new, the new quarantine rules. Oh yeah, how was that? You got a hotel? No, no, I was at, at home. home. Yeah, I was at home, luckily. Oh. It was a week, I beat that by a week. So I think everyone that came back a week after me were in the, uh, were in the hotel, yep. but no, I was lucky enough to be at home. Um, and it was a, during the, yeah, the COVID-19 pandemic, mm. the unprecedented times. Rona. That's it. Um, but yeah, um, I had a good, it was a great opportunity to reflect on the past season. So I was in the US um, and Cat- well, I was based in the US. I was in Park City, Utah. And then um, we were racing the North American Cup, um, which as it sounds in the title is throughout North America. So, so Canada and Canada US. and the US. Um, and you know i had a pretty good season it was a it was a weird season because we had a couple of event cancellations one not due to coronavirus but then the other two due to corona so it was like a half season but um you know i got some good training in and i had you know some good results and i was happy with how it's going um objectively and subjectively as well um but yeah so when i came back you know two weeks of being inside can't leave the house was the perfect opportunity for to really sit down have a think and you know really sit down and it's not look out but look in Mm. all right so you know look into okay what worked what didn't work you know what are my strengths what are my weaknesses sit down write those out and you know really have no distractions because it's like well i can't what are the distractions there wasn't there was going to be none in that 14 days 
because I can't leave. Can't go see anyone. And but you can escape, and people have been doing this. You can escape to Netflix. You can escape to computer mm. games. You can escape to to uh, addictions and and escapism, right? But you didn't. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just how I'm hardwired. Mm. But I just yeah, like that. You know, you make a good point. Yeah, people can escape, and I could have just sat down and watched Netflix all day. But I don't know. I decided not to because of. Um, my love and passion for snowboarding and snowboard cross racing in particular and where I want to go both long and short term with the sport. Um, I don't know, just sort of was it, I just thought, you know, it was a good time. Not that like I was waiting for a particular time, but I just thought, well, you know, why not? Let's get it. Let's, it's just, an opportunity. let's just get it done. Yeah. So, you know, it was a good time to look in and I really um, wanted to learn some new things and grow as a person and as an athlete and so I started taking up a lot of um, like mindfulness and meditation and learning a lot about how we work as humans and how mm. we are uh, you know hardwired and 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 the and the paths and like I call it emotional bl- blueprints we all have from day one and you know how does that affect like obviously because my passion is like for for sports performance how does that affect me in a sports performance way and then going and being able to you know re redo the redo those roads that that were built out of my 20 yeah 20 years ago and just continue to get built like like in you know every 20 everyday life yeah i'm 20 sure. you know roads roads get built they get upgraded some some leave some never get you know some get like torn up that's you know and we all have that as like human beings so you know um one of my biggest things was having my mind on my side and it wasn't you know that was that has been like probably the last yeah 12 months so the australian domestic season um which you know runs over june july august last year so 2019 and then the um yeah the northern winter so january february march competing and racing in the u.s and canada um yeah getting my getting my mind to be my best friend how did you do that because that's 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 the biggest man especially as a basketball athlete when i was younger physically i could train all day Mm. i will i will do whatever you say i'll do more of i'll work harder than you i'll work more consistently than you but when it came to compete consistently, game, real life, lights are on. My, I couldn't get my mind always to do what I wanted to do in practice. So there was a weakness. And I think one of the biggest difficulties, I watched Michael Jordan's documentary and he had a moment, a moment in his career where he said that he felt this spark of confidence. Oh, we're talking about um, the, the Netflix documentary, yeah, now, The Last, the Last Dance. Dance. You seen that? I have. Okay, so you would have... Into watching it for the second time. Well, I, th- I, yeah. I think that's that type of documentary. You've got to do it. Yeah. You, that's a lot of lessons. And so he had a moment in when he hit that game winner, I think it was in his third season at, at college in, mm. at, for North Carolina, yeah. and he hit it, he hit that game winner. And he talked about that confidence he felt from hitting that and that that's, that's what he needed and that's what he got from that game winner was that spark of confidence. I found, and I've talked about this once before, but that moment rarely happened for me, if at all. And so to make your mind work for you instead of against you, how do you do that? And does it come down? And have you had those moments that have given you that? Well, no, yeah, so that's the thing. Previously, I haven't. I never had. My, I hadn't been able to get my mind to work for me because um at, uh, I, because i don't know i couldn't i couldn't tell you it was it was just how i was hard hardwired to be which was kind of like what you were saying you know physically I, I would do everything and it would come to you know in training i'd have these like ripper training runs and just absolutely nail every single feature on course i'd have to or you know just and just be just be on and then it would come to the moment and it would just i'd just get in my own way like so it was about taking getting it was uh, what i needed to do is 
get out of my own way effectively and just let let the performance happen just let it happen let you know let go I was so like you know holding on the whole time like not to, but you know not to go too deep but like it why? was I don't know I wasn't I wasn't sure I wasn't sure why um ex you know and so that's why I wanted to learn learn that revisit that revisit and ask my sit down and ask myself all those questions um some of which I don't have the answer to yet still still trying to figure it out but you know a big part of it was expectation placed expectation on myself I wanted to prove things to others which isn't the way you got to go about it that's my opinion for anyway. you isn't the way I have to go about it because we watch a guy like Michael and he fabricated things to prove to Jerry Krause mm. the GM that oh you, th- you want to recruit Tony Tony uh, Kukoc mm. Kukoc um, you think he's a great player oh we're going to show you when we play when, when we play him um, Team USA mm. right and he did and they went at him because he was using he's trying to prove to others but I think that mentality is reserved for a special small population of people for the majority for people like you people like people like you perhaps that's not resourceful maybe you know it's it really it really does come down to individuality and what what works for you and that's i think i think that you know in in sports performance i think that that's all that matters is what works for you and and then applying that in each and every day because what works for some person is not going to necessarily work for other. How some person performs in their optimal yeah. level isn't going to be the way that, you know, person B does it. But that doesn't matter because, that you know, they're all, they're all different. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was, you know, it was a good opportunity for me to look in and, you know, really start to, really start to learn things about myself and how I operate and you know which is the first step awareness and then um the second is you know now applying new practices and new behaviors and understanding the teaching and then you know seeing seeing when it's true in everyday life and 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 really really making a conscious effort to self-improvement and you know um a wholesome mindset and mentality what have you been doing to practice that and to improve that meditation Mm. daily multiple times a day Mm -hmm. um online online courses Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, what all that kind of stuff do you have a particular meditation um type of meditation or or app that you use um uh not really um there's some good you know free stuff out there online um but yeah you know just just getting quiet really is what it's all about and you you know once once you start to do that it's crazy to see how like how frantic it is between our two ears oh yeah like if you actually take the time to sit down get quiet you can see that it's like a it's just chaos you know our minds just like oh what's that oh what's that oh what's that what's that you think about this you know, you hear a bird and then you like think about birds and then you go to this and then it's like blue sky and then you, but that, you know, like it's great, like, you know, it's, it, it was, all, it was like, it was good to see how like frantic our mind becomes and then, you know, slowly but surely and it's consistent. You got to be consistent in the work, running it back in, running it back in, running it back in. And that's the whole point of the practice is, you know, you lose focus and then you start again, you lose focus and you start again. And because that applies not only to everyday life, but sorry, not only, like that applies to sports specifically, but then it does to everyday life as well. You know, you're trying to practice a skill on the board. You're not going to get it every time. You're going to make mistakes the whole time. But the, the whole point is learning to let go and begin again, let go and begin again, let go and begin again. You messed it up before. Oh, well, that's that moment's gone. We're now in this moment. It's presence of mind the whole time, which is very hard to do. Because it's a skill. Yeah. You got to practice. It's a mental skill. Mm. It's a mental skill, and you know, being especially in this time, um, there's no snow, there's no mountains. So what a what a perfect opportunity to work on physical capabilities and mental capabilities. 
mine's mine's the mind is so powerful it's so powerful and you know it's um it's exciting to see results and when you know and it but it takes a long time so i've been i start uh actually yeah what was this morning because i i've been tracking it every day so Mm. 66 days i think i've done in a row um and you know from day one to day 66 now it's just been like wow you can see the results but um you know and that's good because once you get over that hump it's like more motivation to keep going and that's the thing people think they do a little bit of mindfulness meditation some breathing i don't even like using those terms because there's stigmas around them Mm. meditation i was still a bit woo for some people okay let's put into perspective you have a coach Mm. trains your body you have a program to train your body Mm. to build to break down cause micro trauma in the muscle to break it down so we can recover and build it up. Be stronger, faster, more powerful, bigger. Mm-hmm. Get the qualities you want. Check. Got it. What about the brain? What, you, what, you think you're above getting a coach for your brain? And this is when therapy, psychologist, cognitive behavioral therapists come in. And I tell them my clients, people I work with, tell myself, which I'm seeking out. Well, hold on. Why would I train just my body? Of course, it's interrelated with the mind, but why wouldn't I get a coach for my mind? This monkey chimp mind that is millions of years old, that is just, if you look at the world we're in now, it's only been like this 21st century modern, um, modern era. It's been very short. So we're having to adapt to all these stimuli. We don't do this anymore. You don't do, we don't do that much anymore. So, you have found a framework to coach your mind. You're doing it yourself. Uh, let's go even further. F- fuck the stigma and ther- of, of therapy, psychologists, and all that. It's a coach. It's a mind coach. Mm. It's a coach it for your brain. Yeah. So, if you're going to train your body, train your mind. Mm-hmm. And you are doing that. And I'm doing that. We are doing that. Because we realize between these two ears is the single most powerful thing on this planet. And that's a pretty profound thing. Because it's unlimited potential. Yeah. That's it. You know, and that's that that's been the whole that's been the whole point. There's nothing like making your mind your best friend and to me he started as a pretty nasty kind of guy, but he's getting all right now. You think so? I think what so. do you mean? Nasty guy. Oh, you know. He's the the uh it was a, it was a, it was a, um, it was a negative committee sitting in there the whole time. That would just like to throw up pot shots in at the, in, yourself, at, at myself, other people. At, no, at myself in the moments that I didn't want to. But that's part of it, you know. Is it a, you know, we always we have this self talk, and it's just, and it's this little self voice in our head, and mm. it's just about about changing that if need be. And that was something I needed to do. And something that I'm doing now. But yeah, so I'm excited to that's, see how it goes. I feel like that's the most difficult thing for people to do is to change that self-talk. What are the st- We all tell ourselves stories. Mm. They're just stories. Some of the stories we tell ourselves are fabricated, like Michael Jordan. He fabricated stories to push himself. Some people fabricate stories that push themselves down. Mm. They tell them some stories to justify their poor behavior, their addictions, their lack of discipline. Oh, I don't deserve this. I'm not good enough to be kind to my... I'm not, I don't deserve to be kind to myself. I don't deserve great things in my life. I don't... I'm scared. People tell themselves these stories so they can stay comfortable in their bubble. But how do you... How did you change the story? Um, the negative self-talk, talking down to yourself. Uh, I... I had my ass on fire. I got, I got, I don't know what it is, if it's a flaw in the human condition or if it's just part of how humans are. But for some reason, we don't like to change until life throws a curveball at us and it hits a smack bang in the face. AKA the first podcast I did with Christian Woodford. There you go. People are going to wait till you've taken, an, you've overdosed on fucking 10 Valiums or whatever he took. Mm hmm. And you're knocking on death's door. Why have we got away for that? That's it. I don't know. And, you know, that's what... It goes back to what I was saying. It, 
is it a flaw or is it just part of how we're built mm. as human beings i'm not sure i don't have the answer but what i'm you know what i'm saying is that's that's what happened i got a sense of urgency i got that you know I um yeah it's like I call it AOF you know got my ass on fire like it, you know it's time to get it's time I like it's time to change it's time to get done what I want to get done you know and so yeah that that was all I needed that was that, what was the ass on fire moment um not performing when I wanted to perform yep one time or consistently consistently yeah fuck it sucks yeah it does and you know so that was that was it nothing nothing like special about it or you know it sucked at the time but it's just what that was just that was that was my moment over the last season and then the the um the australian winter last year so we're okay so we're talking about your most recent trip Mm. you had this experience here uh no well yeah i had it there actually so that's where it got better so but really the first the first time was was last last winter 2019 so in that season we have two events in australia um and yeah they i just didn't perform where nearly where i could have nearly where i could have and so that was it that was the that was the final that was like the curveball whack over the face to you know that that like internal voice is saying yo change Mm. you got to do something about this and so yeah that's when i that's when it really started and then i could see a bit you know i started doing it um to a lesser extent that i am now after that season so in the pre-season so the months of like october november december here in oz and then when i went away i could see start seeing some of the results but it was inconsistent like you know i'd get like um i'd have great days where i was calm confident you know really in the in the zone ready to go ready to perform and then i'd have days where it was just monkey mind going on like you know chaotic chaos like i'd get thrown you know i'd get thrown the curveball quite you know as an example quote unquote and then i would just like collapse and not know what to do get frustrated and all that kind of stuff but yeah now it's trying to fix that up what do you think? Because I think there's le- that there's something there. I know when I had those experiences as an athlete, for me, it was f- looking back retrospectively, what made the successful performances successful and what characteristics made the poor performances poor? What was that for you? Um, how? Because we have to analyze oh, yeah, it. Yeah, my mind. And that's what, and, then, yeah. and, and yeah. that's, that was, that was what I, you know, it could have, and it could have been other stuff, but that's when I came back and was in quarantine. That's what I decided, you know, came to the conclusion that it was. Yeah. Because, you know, I did my did my reflection, season review, had a look, you know, had to sit down, had to think and was like, all right, what worked and what didn't? What was my, what was happening at the time? Um, but, you know, and like, it wasn't all negative. That's the thing. Like, so that's why that, and then that's sort of what, kick-started this whole process even more was like no when like you you know the way out of sufferings through it right so like you know there was moments where that's so good i had like i could see you know i could see that i, I had big um oh fuck what am i trying to say i had big improvements in my like mindset and how i dealt with things mentally i'll give you an example so we're in colorado um early march training day so how so how a snowball cross event runs um on the noram so the in the in the north american cup circuit is you have a practice day on course because each course is different they have the same features so jumps bank turns um rollers and stuff like that but they are all like set up differently so no courses no courses the same same features but they're not the same um they have a technical section at the start which involves like um bumps and like whoops and stuff and you know things that you need to generate speed off to obviously get out front and then you know there's so many factors to it so that's why you have a practice day the day before the event an event runs over like a a two days or so three days so you have the practice day the training day um and then you have 
race day one and then race day two because it's you know it's hard for uh, resorts to hold these events you have two right two separate like races um over, over two days so you have yeah first day of race day one second day completely different day race day two so you get it's like it's like you know you're killing two birds with one stone you get two races at the one loca- competition location at the one event if that makes sense so we have the training day we're in colorado and oh everything that could have gone wrong went wrong um first run i also i'd seen some vision of the course just on like social media and stuff before and you know it like there was a it was a it was a two rollers which you'd air over and then into a jump um anyone listening who was at that event's not gonna know exactly what i'm talking about um and the jump like it was quite kicky so which means like when you get when you take off it would like like jerk you up into the air really fast but i didn't know that coming into it so i was like going at about 50 60 percent and was just trying to like be passive over it and you know feel out everything like you do that like the first run and then before you really start getting into it start trying to get that race line dialed in but um i like was so passive where, where you that it was just not the way to do and i called i did what was called like o- overshooting the landing so like the landings obviously where you land and I went way past, fell smack bang on my back and broke the, uh, it's called the binding, which is where your foot goes in and it, and that's what mounts to the board. Shit. And so that, that completely broke and I was winded and like, oh, my back was so sore. I got massive whiplash on my neck. Anyway, go back up to the top. Oh, my binding's broken. Fuck, what do I do? Switch it out with my coaches because I only had... Like you usually take up a couple of boards, but I only ha- I only had the one board that day because the others were sitting with um with like the the wax on it. Um, and, you know, this is getting kind of technical, which you're not gonna no, probably no. not gonna know. But yeah, th- that's just to prepare it for the race the next day. Yep. Anyway, so I had to switch out with my coach's binding, which wasn't the exact same model that I had, so it was a bit funky. Anyway, so then I like went and did that, and you know finally got in, and then it was like trying to adjust to the different feeling of it. And so I had like, you know, a sh- a, just a shit practice run. And training only goes for about like two hours, which seems a long time, but it's not because you got to like, you got to queue up because there's, you know, a hundred people at an event, men and women included, everyone trains at the same time. So you got to like, everyone's trying to get in the runs. Then you got to get up, up the chairlift, get back to the top and then you're back of the line. And then so, you, you know, like two hours isn't a long, it's maybe like five runs max. Man, that's it. Yeah. So I had like, so I'd wasted an hour already because I had to just sit on the side, drink some water from like the crash, fix the binding. So I hadn't even had a full run on the course yet. The second one, I'm trying to adjust to my coach's bindings just to get it done, which was just a shocker. So it's like, oh, I throw away that one. And then it's like 15 minutes left. And it's like, I'm having a meltdown at the top, like just a complete emotional breakdown of like, like I haven't even done a fucking run, you know, like we, I, like it's race day tomorrow. It's just freaking out completely. But then like got in, I, you know, I was like, the la- I was literally the last, just before training closed, I was like the last competitor to, to do a run. And, you know, it was okay, but just to get down the top to the bottom of the course and like get most things done that I wanted to was like, that was a huge win and you know my coach and I sat down had a chat and they were like you know that was like probably the best moment they've seen from me that season was just like you know just to literally just put everything that had happened the last hour two hours behind focus you know regain focus and just go all right let's just let's just put a run down and so that was a huge tick for me a huge win like because you know mentally I could I could just set everything that had happened aside and just deal with what happened what i had in front of me and then we'll you know we'll come back tomorrow but yeah so that was that was a big tick so that's the thing it was not all negative but um you know and that's why one you know to see the effect the positive effects that you know you have when you when you can train your mind to work with you work from your corner you know it's 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 huge it's huge that's a great story Mm. Just that moment when you're emotionally overwhelmed. Those are the moments that people 
quit or they refocus, get their shit together yeah, and try and take a positive out of this adversity. Yeah. That was it. That was it. I just had to get my shit together. And you did. And take the positive. What was, you know... How was the... Sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah. No, you go. I was going to ask, how was the actual competition day the following day? Huh. So the following day... Um, oh, that, that wasn't great. I was in a, a lot of pain. I was super sore. Yeah. So, my, you know, I woke up like my neck was just... I bet oh. you might have had a concussion. No, because we did a concussion test straight away. Oh, you did? That's a huge thing. Yeah. Okay. Did you have any symptoms? No. Except the pain. So, it might have just so, been a... I think it was just whiplash. Yeah. Um, a couple, Yeah, the US team doctor who happened just to be standing at that corner saw it and she came over. I, I don't know who that was. Or her name but she would like just came over and like i'm like did i hit my head and she's like mm, no i don't think she's like no it looked you know you looked okay from my perspective anyway we did a concussion test like just with me and my team at the top and i, and I was fine so you know i was doing well, right i can get back to training because that's a huge thing in sport is you know obviously head injuries but yeah i think i was just sore from maybe it's just how i landed on my neck but yeah it was so sore the next day yeah and my back was just like everything was tight yeah and i was trying to put it on um you know put a mask on it so the australian team was there and one of the coach australian head coaches were like um oh how's your back from yesterday and i'm like oh yeah no nah, it's fine but it was just a outright lie it was killing me Shit. but um you know i just wanted to like just get in that frame of mind of yeah it's fine yeah. this is how it is but um anyway that day wasn't great um i think i was just in a lot of pain i was stiff and sore but it was the following day where i had my best result in an open competition ever so i was pretty stoked on that in a pretty it was a t- pretty tough field as well we had a few um a few world cup so professional athletes come race because they had a break in their season. A couple of them live in Colorado around that area. So they like to just oh, yeah. race, you know, um, which is why not. And so, um, yeah, I was stoked, stoked to get 10th at that, um, which was... In the state you were in, mm. in the pain you were in. Yeah. You only had one full run. Yeah. Yeah. And you finished with... With my best result in an open competition. That's... Fu- yeah. Bro. So imagine what you could do feeling good physically with that mental state exactly that's the question that's the AOF that's the spark yes that's that is that Michael Jordan (laughs) North Carolina bang hits the shot bro that's awesome and so you know that's why I I gained interest and I wanted to learn and I have been (sighs) and um, you know it's yeah it's been great to see it in practice so yeah. Nice. How was the rest of the trip? Because you went all over North America. Mm. I mean, I'm be meaning to talk to you about it. Um, that was Colorado, but how was all the other states? Um, yeah, it was. You know, we went to some cool places. Um, we, um, I had, you know, it was an, it was like a bit of an iffy season, you know. So I had that result, which was good, but then I had a shocking weekend two two weeks later, where I don't, where that was. You know that, and that was the both both sides of my mental game. Mm. Like when it flourishes, it's like it's you know I'm on point, and then when it's not, it's it's really affecting my game. So I had, you know, I had a like I had one result which was just the worst, which I think was my, one of my worst performances ever, um, and so that sucked. And then, um, but the next day. Yeah, on paper it wasn't great, but I actually had a really good first. I actually had a I actually had a really good day in the sense that when that I got, you know, I got my mind right. I got into the zone, and I just ticked off what I wanted to tick off. Like I actually I actually rode a pretty good race. It just wasn't a it just wasn't a very good result. But you know, which is of what I've learned is like that's you know that's the only thing you can take off because I can't control. I can't control what other people do. I can't control how they raise hell. What, what goes on with them? So, you know, like the only, your, your only competitor really is yourself. And that's, yeah. so, and that's something that I've, you know, begin to believe and, and believe now. And, you know, like that's just my, that's my opinion on it because I can't, I can't control what you do. I can't control what other people do. So, you know, the whole point is just, it's, it's you, you know, 
can you can you be greater than your yesterday self? Absolutely, that's, that's the point. That's the whole game. That's the and that's the process as as I interpret it. Anyway. No, th- that's the game. The life, Kevin Hart said, it. life is like, is like a game, a video game. I we I liken it to. My job on this planet is to level the fuck up every day. Move forward. Do not collect two hundred dollars once you pass go. Fuck that. Keep going. And like a video game, well, I like not I like to a video game. You only got one life. Sorry, you're dead. Don't know what happens after that. But you got one life, maybe sixty to a hundred years. If we make it to a hundred, I'm about twenty five percent through that life. You coming up to it. So let me treat it like a video game. Let me treat my adversities like bosses in a game. The little things and the big things. Physical, mental challenges. Personal problems, relationship problems, business problems. Let me look at those as bosses I must defeat. On the mountain. Those are your bosses. Those are your big bosses at the end of the level. You want to get to the next level? You got to beat that boss. But who's that boss? He's in between your ears. That's it. He, you fabricated the boss. These just experiences that you have in life. You must mentally beat yourself because you. That's it. You are competing against yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, and that's where that's where I'm at now as we sit and record this. So, it's good. It's good. I'm excited. Should be, man. When uh, did you have any other highlights or lowlights of that trip? How long did it go for? Um, a couple of months. Yeah, when did I leave? Just after New Year, December. Ah, oh, sorry, January, um, February, March. Came back mid March because the season got cut short because um, of Corona. But yeah. yeah, yeah. What was that like when you're in the overseas? All this is starting to bubble up. Well, yeah. So I got an interest. I got an f- interesting story about that. So um, I actually got sick, uh, not with coronavirus, but I had the flu. Um, the day bef- on the training day before the last event that what was not supposed to be the last event but ended up being the last event yeah during so, flu game flu, yeah flu. yeah so <laughs> so i had like so i didn't actually end up racing the last race which sucked because then um i kind of felt like i fell down the overall rankings and stuff and i had and that was why did you race it that was oh because i was like i was dead i was dead i've been chucking all night um, so, so did Michael. Yeah, I heard about that. Hey, that was I got food poisoning. I got to make a point. That was food poisoning. He said in his documentary, he was hooked up to an IV all day from the That's team. That's true. From the team That's doctors. true. He was hydrating. Yeah. I was not. You, you did not have I did that. not have that luxury <laughs> as a uh, as a uh, snowball cross athlete. We did Fair not. Enough. We did not have team doctors to hook us up with IVs <laughs> at the click of a finger. So um, all right. we're a little less sophisticated than the old Chicago Bulls in the nineties, but. <laughs> Um, that's okay good point yeah and yeah anyway his event was at night I had to get up and start either make a decision at oh. like 7.30 in the morning yeah no, so, true so he um, had all day to recover anyway I was and I, ha- I had like 30 minutes sleep oh shit and it was just that's all t- turning to shit this is not like a gold medal type of competition no this is, this is, this is just another tournament it was another race another race I wanted, obviously Fair I wanted to perform because I actually had a pretty good training day the day before even though I was starting to get really really sick and I could feel it I'm like oh just yeah. hopefully I can pull through tomorrow. But like I lit- I literally could not move. Yeah. Didn't eat like that night. Didn't eat obviously the whole day. And then that after that, so everyone raced that day. And then it was like, oh, well, season's over. And then because the governing body of um, the sport canned all events after that, after that weekend. And huh. so we were, because of coronavirus. And yeah. so we were done. Anyway... I actually ended up going to hospital because I was I got worse and worse, and this was like, like pretty early Corona stage. But so it had just been classified as a pandemic, and um, it was you know In March. Yeah, March, and so um, I was thinking, oh shit, don't tell me I picked it up because we were going airport to airport, airplane to airplane, like 
traveling the whole time. Are you thinking in the middle of... Did you, are you paying much attention at this point to like the world is starting to Not ramp really, up this weird thing? But a little bit. Yeah. When I got crook, yes. Yeah. So I actually ended up going to hospital because it's like, well, I better get tested because I didn't want to like fly back, go to fly home and just become a walking infection the whole time. Like For that's sure. just, it's just not a sensible, it's just not a sensible thing to do. Yeah. Um, so I got tested. Oh, I can elaborate on that testing process. It's not fun. Well, have you ever had it? Have you ha- have you been, have you tested for Corona? No, but I know it's an intense nasal swab. Oh, up dude. Is it ever? <laughs> they stick it so far up your nose. It, oh my, oh, I would have been pulling the funniest of faces, but, um, yeah, it didn't tickle, that's for sure. Yeah. And then they stick it down your throat as well. Really? Yeah. They did your throat? Well, th- yeah, I don't know if they do that now, but they definitely, they did for me. Oh. And th- anyway, so funny story, I was in Quebec. I was in Quebec City, which is, I don't know if you've ever been or heard of the place. It's French, it. French yeah. Canada. Yeah, yeah. Rare, rare to find someone speaking English. Yeah. And maybe the English is, you know, it's it's limited. Yeah. Like, oh, it depends where you're in. You know, people can speak it. I think they elect not to... Um, the doctor was pretty good. He could, he got by. The nurse I couldn't really understand. Um, she was, she, but she said she's like, oh, English is fifty fifty. I said, okay, fair enough. I'm I'm in your state, so yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, sticks it down, stick it down the throat. Anyway, I then go have to quarantine while they wait for the results to come back. Rest of the team goes. It's the end of the season, so I'm just in a hotel room waiting to hear from these results. Uh, four days go by. I'm starting to feel a lot better. Fifth day, I'm fine, and I haven't heard from the the, the hospital like what are the what the results are, and so you know it's like, what 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 do I do? Waiting, things are now starting to close, like restaurants and bars and stuff are closed. Uh, I'm in just, Quebec. Yeah, I'm just propped wow. up in a hotel room, and um, you- anyway, we get um, finally get the results. All, all clear yeah so fine which i kind of knew at that point anyway because like well i'm fine so anyway but it was good to like get that well you might have just recovered yeah yeah that's well that's the other thing that's that's new yeah so that's what my parents say i was like well you might have just recovered but no nah, i was all, I, I turned out didn't have it okay cool great let's now i was like tr- we we're trying to figure out okay so how do we get home because flights were now starting to slow down we've managed to actually so where half of my stuff was in park city because I that's where like I was based f- throughout the whole season, but then I had I just had a select amount of things that I needed for the competition. I'm like, well, I just have to get home because borders are closing down. The U.S. Canadian border shut, so I couldn't even get back into Park City if I wanted to. So now your only I am mission is leave from Canada yeah, back home to Australia. So I'm like, call up call up the parents I'm like can we find a flight like I need to get home and you know you know and they're like yeah you know, like you definitely need to get home borders are starting to close flights you know Qantas weird. I think it, Qantas had announced that they were grounding the international flights and you know the world this was like week one of the world just in its panic state yes of like like what a moment what that do was we, what do we do yeah. I mean and you know and uh, to be honest I started to panic a little bit because it was the last night and I walked I was trying to find some dinner because, you know, I'm in a hotel room, I can't cook anything, and everything's shut. Everything is closed. Signs all up, you know, we are sorry to inform oh, the Canadian that government. Like to fo- that, that to was, walk through? That was scary. It was ghost town. Bro. And at night, and I'm like, i got to get something to eat. And so I think I walked about mm, maybe 6K. What? And, yeah, and I found a subway that so happened to be open. About an hour? Yeah, yeah. I walked for an hour to find a subway that was open, Jeez, yeah. shout out. There you go. Found, yeah, got that, came back, and then call up my parents again. It's like, oh, have you found any flights? Because it's about maybe 9, 10 o'clock at night. And then they're like, oh, no, I haven't yet, but we'll keep you informed. Oh, my God. I pack up all my stuff, just hoping that we can go. Just- so then it's, I think it's during the day here, Australian time. They ring me at 3 in the morning, and they go, all right, we've got you something you're going to go Quebec City, Montreal, Montreal, Vancouver, Vancouver, Sydney, Sydney, Melbourne. <laughs> Starting, and they're like, you need to be at the, I think your first flight's at six. Cause so you, that's why they had to call you at 3 a.m.? 3 a.m. Holy shit. But like, I was ready to go. I Damn. was ready to go. You were smart. You prepared. Yeah. So oh, shit. I'm like, all right. So got up. It's like, well, I'm up now. So started the journey at four. Oh my God. Airport. You know, and I was like 
like I don't know if like taxis were running or like what like you know literally the world was going into a frenzy no one had any idea on how bad people this is when like toilet paper was getting lost uh, not, not lost I mean you know hoarded down here and all that you know the supermarket fights were happening yes, yes. you know everyone was going crazy state which is kind of funny to, like, to look back on now yeah it is you know, it is um, and yeah anyway it was a 48 hour expedition jeez home. non-stop non-stop so 4am or whatever it was <laughs> Quebec time it's like the fucking amazing race yeah and then I landed here at got to Australia got to Melbourne I reckon it was maybe two in the two in the afternoon, and whatever that equated to, it was like four p.m. Quebec. What was that? Four a.m. Sorry, four a.m. Quebec time. Two straight days, forty-eight hours of travel, because I literally went from one side of the continent of North America, Quebec, which is far east, all the way across to Vancouver, which is far west, down to Sydney, down to Melbourne, and yeah, that was it was a journey, but and I was lucky to get home, and Ooh. thankful I could get home. Because then I started the uh, 14 day quarantine process at home, which if I had arrived a couple of days later, you know, everyone else weren't, wasn't so lucky. They were stuck at Crown Metropole or whatever. Not that that's the worst thing. But yeah, whatever. When you touch down, mm. you have arrived in Melbourne, Australia. Welcome home. Oh, what was that feeling? I, like? It was actually Sydney, to be honest. Si- sorry. Because even if Sydney, yeah, yeah. even if Sydney, like, I, like even if that, stuffed up somehow you can drive correct yeah once i landed in once i landed in australia it was like oh just this breath sigh of relief Damn. because here's the thing right we left at 11 55 p.m from canada and 12 in the morning i think um flights to australia from canada were starting to like uh, 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 look i don't know if this is exactly true but they were definitely starting to slow down I'm not sure if it was completely all off, but Qantas had granted all their fleet. Um, that was the last flight Air Canada was doing. You went on the last flight. Yeah, Air I went Canada on, was I went doing. On, I went on one of the last ones. I'm sure. I'm sure it was the. You know, there could be people out there that say no, that's not true. But I'm sure it was the last from Canada because I knew of a couple. Like not that I like. I just knew a couple people who were elsewhere in the world who like just was stuck. Yeah. But it was like. Yeah, 11.55, and I know that I'm pretty sure Canada was slow, like, they weren't doing internationals after midnight that that day, which was a Tuesday. And so, yeah, it was like, once we took off, oh, that's so good. And then once we touched down, it's like, Australian soil, yes, I'm home. And I'll walk down to Melbourne if need be. <laughs> but You walked an hour to Subway, you'll walk home. Yeah, correct. But nah, it was good. So I got back and, you know, that was... That was very lucky. Damn. Yeah, plane completely full. Not a not a single seat available. Really? Yeah. On all of them? Or um, the one back to Sydney? The one back to Sydney. Oh, I can't remember the others. No, yeah. actually, they were pretty busy. Yeah, because they people wanted to get home who weren't necessarily away internationally, but, you know, they were domestically in different parts of the country, so they wanted to just get home before domestic flights ended up stopping. So, yeah, no, they were. They were pretty busy, the flights. Uh, Montreal to Vancouver was full Quebec to Montreal and that's only like 40 minutes so that wasn't too busy um, but yeah no, nah, Montreal Vancouver was full and then Vancouver Sydney was yeah that was full not a single seat available so what people were getting story. people wanted to get home yeah people and now to get home. when you want to travel fucking plane's empty I know the opposite Every, yeah exactly man but yeah. you just made it yeah it was it was no, nah, it was an adventure, but no, nah, I was very lucky. You, you know it. what? Here's another thing. You anticipated to be ready. Mm. And I think that's the thing. You were ready for an uncertain opportunity, an uncertain uh, time you had to take action. I sleep with my phone off. If that's me and I'm doing my normal habits and I didn't prepare myself or if someone, you, I don't know if you put your phone off. No, I do. Yeah. I usually put it off. But ha- I, I don't know, I got that like sense of like, yeah. shit's closing, yeah. you know, restaurants are closing. Be I, ready. I was obviously like, I had nothing to do. I couldn't leave the hotel, so yeah. was, which was probably the worst possible thing. I had to turn it off. I was obviously kept the, kept the news on a bit because I wanted to inf- get informed of like, okay, what is going on here? Yeah, yeah. But that just like that, oh, you could only do like that in 30 minute blocks. Yeah. Because you just, that just 
became toxic and I felt like I was being drowned in coronavirus. Yeah. So it's like, just change the channel and, you know, whatever. Yeah. So, but I, I kept it on and that, because I wanted to know, like, that's how I found out, like, our US Canadian borders shutting and, you know, like, I, I had to keep informed. Like, I'm by myself there. So it's like, I, I, I want to, you know, it's not like, oh, I'll, I'll just scroll social media all You don't want to be in the it's, dark. Yeah, correct. It's I, fucking and that's what I felt like. I did not want to be the sitting duck. And so, you know, it was keeping up to date. And then once, once I got the sense that everything was closing and that like, you know, borders were closing, restaurants were closing, people were going into paddock mode um, because it was going skyrocketing at just an alarming rate. Um, like hundreds of cases, new cases a day. And, you know, everyone was just freaking out. It was like, um, yeah, didn't want to be the sitting duck. And that's why I started calling my parents. And then they, yeah, they were, I was lucky to have them find some flights home but yeah so we're like oh keep the phone on because let me know and so Oof. i pack up that's what we said like just Jeez. pack up all the stuff and just be ready to go so i was ready and can lucky it was the next day but can you imagine if you didn't wake up to that phone call oh, all your phone died what's you, that um would have felt like nah what's that that's that show the terminal with um oh who is it tom hanks tom hanks not that, not that I was in an airport terminal, but I was in a hotel room. I would have been bloody him, I reckon. There you go. Have you seen that movie? It's a good no, movie. No, I haven't. It's Directed by Steven Spielberg. Yeah, it's a, it's a great movie. I think it's long. It goes to two and a half hours, but it's a very good movie. I'll give you a quick, quick rundown. It's like he arrives. Uh, he's from an Eastern European country. He arrives in New York, but there's something to do with like his his visa or whatever he doesn't speak english and but then there's like some civil rights war or movement that happens in his country and it just no longer becomes a country so his passport becomes like invalid overnight in his flights to new york right. and so they're like oh, well we can't let you out because you don't have a visa and we can't send you home because your country doesn't exist and so he ends up living in an airport term it's a really good movie he ends up living in an airport terminal for like months Wow. And uh, and it's what like a cool concept. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool. Don't concept. tell me anymore. I might watch that. Yeah, one you day. have to watch it. It's just one of those like movies where it's like, no, you got to. It's a good movie okay. about like um, perseverance and stuff. Well, not necessarily even perseverance, but like, I guess to an extent. It's I don't know. I won't. I'll stop talking. You just got to watch it. <laughs> it's a good movie. I highly recommend. But yeah, I felt like I was going to become him just in the airport. <laughs> uh, in, sorry, in the hotel. In the hotel. Wow. Living in a hotel room. That's so true. Yeah. I had a friend who got stuck in Peru for about a month. She couldn't leave anywhere. And I don't know if you know about Peru. You know, hopefully maybe I'll have her on one day. She can talk about it. But they are much more authoritarian than your classic democracy mm. okay so police in the street they got to a point where you if you mate they had times where males and females could go out male on one day male on odd days female on even days so like every second day type of thing mm. you couldn't leave until it was your day based on your gender right. um you had to wear like a white flag or a white handkerchief if you were going out for an emergency so you don't get fined and put in jail, mm. okay? So Australia, they closed the border. She couldn't leave. Mm. She got stuck. Mm. They were doing char charter flights, all these countries from other different countries doing charter flights. Australia still didn't do one. Australia didn't do one week, went by two weeks, went three weeks, went by. And they were like huge. Like if you got stuck, you would have to pay for like a five to $10,000 charter flight. Expensive business. Mm, very. Um, then she gets home and has to get in a hotel for another two weeks. So yeah. it's just like so many people are in that situation. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was crazy times. But it still is. What do mm. you make of all this? Um, I don't know. Like, I've kind of gotten used to it now. To you be do. Honest. It's, it's just, it just becomes life. Yeah. It, it just ticks over. Like the first maybe, what, three days, it's like, like it was kind of boring. But then it's like, you know, what I was saying before, um, I found stuff to do. You know, it's make just it just is what it is. So, you know, just do it. The old, <laughs> the old uh, Nike scene. The old Nike, yeah, yeah. Just do it. So, so yeah. What, what have I make of it? I don't know. Not much, apart from the fact that it's just life now. Yeah. Until it changes. Yeah. And you know, all the speculation of like, oh, what would be the new normal? It's like, oh, I don't really care what the new norm's going to be because it's just what you know. You can't keep from happening what's happening, right? 
Yeah. And, you know, it's a good way to look at it. So it's like, whatever's happening is happening. So you're going to, you know, can you, you make, make, you know, make your two lists. What can you, what can you control? What can't you control? And then bang, go from there. Well, the main thing you can control is how do you, how you respond. Correct. I oh, know. I can't control what, uh, what rules are made. Correct. I can control how I respond to them. Correct. You know, what I do and how I adapt to them. Absolutely. That's it. That's the only, that is the only, uh, that it's the only way to go about it. Well said. So, yeah, and that's what, that's what I've been doing. It's, uh, you know, I was pretty fortunate to keep up. Like, I've been able to keep up physical work. Mm. Um, yeah, really, really well because we had a pretty good home gym set up. And then, like, well, I was obviously stuck at home, but then Dad went out and bought a couple of extra weight plates just as everything was like, all right, we're now closing. And so we're like, yeah got that prepared and so you know i've been i've been able nice. to keep physical work going that's going, so, so important yeah which has been good so i haven't been really held back at, at all i'm the strongest i've been so it's actually been really it's, it's i've actually really enjoyed it because the first two weeks it's like well i've got nothing else to do so just train let's just train and train and train and train train the body train the mind you know work on work on let's let's be the most successful me i can and so that and then that was sick because I could do that for two weeks and that was the only mindset I had and that it was almost like that kicked the momentum ball rolling to keep going even though you know now I can leave and now it's obviously looser rules but you know it's like that mindset hasn't changed so it's it's been really I've actually really enjoyed it same yeah I think that I, I really I have actually really enjoyed as in like yeah don't get me wrong I have like I don't enjoy the suffering that people have been going through, but I've enjoyed the change of lifestyle. And I'll push back on that and say, I enjoy the suffering people go through because we deserve it and we need it because we're soft, including me. I put my hand up. Me too. I'm with you. Yeah. It's time. Soft times create soft people. Hard times create hard people. You need hard times. We don't know what war's like. No, we don't. We, 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 our grandparents do. Yeah. I don't know what it's like to have a family and transport my children on a giant ship for multiple days from Egypt to Australia. My grandparents do, though. I don't. I don't know the fear and uncertainty of just seeing photos, grainy photos, black and white photos of of the lands you're going to. One thing particularly stood out to me when I was in Ellis Island, New York City, um, Ellis Island, I don't know if you've heard about it, but it was the islands where they would, it would be the, the islands, that, it's next to the Statue of Liberty, um, where they would pull immigrants to before to get, uh, before they put them places, right? It was like a, a place where they decided where you will go, right? Across the country, even. And what struck me, even to this day, I still remember, is they had little pamphlets um, and little cards, like postcards of drawings of different parts of America. So it was like California. Mm. It was like beach, sunny yeah. sky, blue water, um, Chicago, something, something. That's all they had. Mm. They had a short description, mm. a drawing painting mm. of the place that represented where they would be going. Yeah, Utah, mountain. It's Colorado, mountains. Yeah, yeah. that's it. The uncertainty. They don't know what the hell it looks like. They don't know what the, the culture's like. They don't know what food's like, this like, that like, that people consider when they move places. Mm. It's hard times. And now, it's easy times. Yeah, it really is when you put it into perspective. It's time that we get challenged. It's time that, w- for the first time in my life, one of the first, the pandemic creates a common enemy. A common enemy we all have. The whole world has come together. Almost every single country in the world has been affected by this. So we all have a common invisible enemy. His name is SARS-CoV-2. And it's, it's brought people together. It's caused conflict. It's caused political divide. It's caused people like you and myself to use this time as an opportunity to work on ourselves and come out better, which I love and res- love you so much for taking that time because we all have that. This is an opportunity. Because our right, restrictions are easing here, their restrictions are easing here. We don't control what happens. If we get an explosion of cases in hundreds and thousands over the next month or two, or next year, or in six months, 
how, how is your government going to respond? I don't know. Be ready, though. Be ready. I'll say it again. Be ready. I say this time and time again if you heard my podcast. Uh, yeah. If you're on a job seeker, job keeper, if you are collecting money, getting that government sweet, sweet money, you best be saving that because they're going to tax your dick off. So please put at least 50% away because there's huge economical implications to this. Have you thought about that? Are you are you like looking... I'm, I think about this stuff every day. But businesses, small businesses, are going out in America and other mm, places. Yeah. I hear it all the time. Yeah. Here... We're fortunate where we have this really lovely safety net. Yeah. It's called the Australian government. Mm. As much as people shit on it, yeah. go, please. No, no, no. no. Well, I'm agreeing. Yeah. As much as people shit on it, there's this one, like $1,500 check you can get every two weeks, which is 79 grand a year, 39 grand for six months. It's, it's crazy. Well above the mean. Oh. Um, oh. And so now people are going to live above their means. What are you going to do? Are you going to invest in yourself with this money mm. or are you going to invest in bullshit? <laughs> Oh. The fuck you gonna do? Yeah, you make a good point. Because when things start opening up and people have their thousands of dollars, oh, I'm gonna go to the clubs. Yeah. Go to the casinos open up. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go to a restaurant every night. Okay. But if you think these hard times won't come again in the coming years, you are mistaken. Mm. They're coming. This might happen again. This pro- you know, people say this is a once in a lifetime event. The Prime Minister fucking said that. I'm like, no. No. That the philosophy, the, the 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 critical thinking in that sentence is null because it's it's just false. Because I'm not explain. Let me uh, qualify my statement: is that it's not that whether we're going to get another pandemic, because even though history tells us that every 20, 30, 10 ish years we get another big virus mm. in in a region or around the yeah, world, yeah. and we have history for that. But it's not the only thing that can cause disruption. Yeah. Solar flares. Uh, biological attacks, man-made, ter- terrorist, um, food supply issues. Mm. The United Nations says we have about 60 harvests left before our topsoil is completely devoid of nutrients to grow a lot of the crops that we wow. do. I didn't know that. That's about 60 years. We do about one harvest every, I think it's eight to 12 months. Mm. So that's why we need to look at regenerative agriculture. Anyway, it's another topic. Uh, natural disasters. We live in a country where, man, that's not doesn't happen that often. I oh, know f- we're so lucky here, bro. No earthquakes. Oh. No volcanoes. Yeah, I mean Queensland tsunamis. gets hit a bit with oh it's cyclones and stuff. Cyclones, yeah, yeah, true, true, true. My bad. In Melbourne, I can't remember the last natural disaster. Yeah, I mean we've had the fires. Yeah, we've yeah. had. Yeah, that's the worst one. We've had floods, true. but like I think you know compared to other places that just get hit. All the time. I think we're pretty lucky. Yeah, well, here's the thing about a fire. A fire, it starts off small. And I know a cyclone and tornado starts off small, but when they start off small and like across the ocean, and they, they, can, they can, boom, hit the land and just yeah. obliterate in like a day. A fire is like, well, it usually happens where there's a huge amount of bushland. There's not usually a lot of people there. It's different types of conditions. So I think we're very fortunate, but also, you know, it's terrible in of itself. So what I'm saying with all these issues, civil unrest, war, um, uh, power outages, um, all these things that can go wrong, these are not once in a lifetime events. We're talking about once every five to 10 year events. Mm. This is this is going to happen again in some way or another. Yeah. So what are you going to do? How are you going to use this time to prepare? Yeah. Do you have a power supply? Do you have water filtration? Do you... People think hoarding food. No, stop. Do you have... Four weeks worth of food for you and your family if and when shit hits the fan. Just in case. It's, yeah. I don't even get rid of the if. It's when. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. It's when. Thank you. Like, I mean, I know what you're saying and I get like the old, you know, the old one in a lifetime event occurs. Mate, but, you know, you can, like, they occur. Like, it, 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 they happen. They happen. Um, you know, and so... Yeah, it is. It's it's you just got to be ready for it. But I mean, I like, I like the the shake up. I oh, like yeah. the pressure it creates. Yeah. Um, a it. good quote you probably know: "Pressure can bust pipes, but it can also create diamonds." So, mm. what are you doing 
to thrive in the pressure situation that 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 COVID nineteen produces. And that's up to you. You bust in like a pipe, or you are, uh, you know, you becoming a diamond. Fuck. Yeah, it's a good one. I like it. That's good. Yeah. That's right. That's the question. Are you busting like a pipe, spazzing yep. out, yep. emotional? Yep. Pressure does two things. Yes. It can bust pipes yep. or it can create diamonds. You decide. Exactly. Exactly. You're a pipe. Gone. Water leaking. You know. Broken. Emotions everywhere. Exactly. Chaos. What happens when a pipe bursts? Oh. You know, stuff comes out. It's like frantic. It's not good then what happens when that same that same um i don't know how to, how to even describe it that that maybe is it's an in, it's an intangible or that physical um attribute that pressure is also creates diamonds which you know bang what are you gonna what are you gonna be when the pressure when the pressure comes Mm. It's a choice. Mm. The choice is we all must decide when pressure, and discomfort comes a knocking, whenever small or big way, how you can respond. So get comfortable being uncomfortable. It's a nice statement, but how do you do it? Is the thing. How do we teach people? How do we expose people? Condition people? I don't. I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I think you can. I think you can um, help and assist, and which is sort of like when it like me specifically being in like performance for snowboarding. Hmm. You know, like you can't. I can't go to like a coach or whatever and tell me who can tell me the answer. As much as I would say, like. Because I think I think it I think it's such an intangible like part of you know of um, living in like performance is you know the, this mental side of things um, that I think you have to you have to sort of learn it yourself like because I think it's going to be different for everyone so there's not like a formula or a textbook that can be written yeah you know what I mean you got to have those experiences I think so yeah and that's you know that's my take on it. And because how you're how you're gonna best learn and interpret it's gonna be different to me. How you're gonna then apply it to your lifestyle is gonna be different to me, and it's gonna be different to Dan and Julie and whoever else. Yeah. You know. But yeah. Pressure makes diamonds. That's it. That's it. <sighs> That's really something to reflect on, um, because. I'm stuck here in the moment and it's like, I don't want to say it's easy for me, but it's become a lot easier mm. because I practice it. Mm. It's a muscle. I strengthen it. Every decision is either going to strengthen or weaken my resolve. And so I think about the people who struggle, the people who I um, who I know, who I coach, like it's not as easy for them. Mm. It's not as easy for them just to do that. They get stuck. They're depressed. They're in a rut. They're overweight. They're sick. They're sick and tired. <sighs> They're addicted to drugs and alcohol and fucking other bullshit. Are the cruxes? How did they escape? And that, to me, is like. I, I, I wish and I hope everyone can find that for themselves. Yeah. Find the the power in themselves and potential within themselves, to untap that potential and to gain access to that strength. Which which is what I was saying, like, it's. Being able to look in, not out. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's the first step. Look in. How do you operate on an emotional level, on a on a on a physical level, on everything? I'll give you. But then it also goes back to um, experiences, which is what you were saying. Like I'll give you an example, which I mean, we're gonna kind of 
go back a few years here, so I don't know if you want to put this at the start of the podcast, but I'll give Can't you the, nothing. I'll give you the start of all right. I'll give you the start of say my snowboarding. Um, when I started competing, uh, well, no, actually not not when I started competing. My first my first punch in the face. I'll okay. I'll give you that. Give my first my first hiccup, big, big, life, right hand upper awesome uppercut. Player. You know, hook. Good. Boom. Yeah. Out. What was it? Ten seconds on the ground. Knocked out. Shit. Was I was in Colorado. I was training. Um, this was a week before the US Junior Nationals, and I had the worst injury that I've had to date. I was. It was early in the morning. We were training jumps, and um, it was it was dark. It was a dark morning. <laughs> because it was cloudy and the snow was hard and icy and it was really fast and I was going way too fast for the um, size of the jump I was hitting and overshot it and ended up falling about two stories like from the air, past the landing, onto the flat, smack bang right onto my um, right shoulder. And I I think I've told you this, I, I... 100% 100% severed the head of my humerus and I ripped the bicep off the bone and it was oh it was just hell like that injury I you know still sits like I just remember it I just remember it like being like the worst experience like I've never felt shock like that ever before I've never felt shock like that ever before and then the like the process after that you know in dealing with the not only getting right physically because i had emergency surgery that night which was botched in the u.s so i came back and when i only found that out in melbourne when i went and saw the guy who was going to take out the um three pins that were put in to supposedly be holding the shoulder in place which they weren't and he's looking at it like like these aren't even in place we need to operate on you like tomorrow or like two days because this has been six weeks now since you've come back or since the initial injury it hasn't your shoulder's not attached to anything it's flo- you know the head of the humerus is floating around in space how did you function how did you move your well i didn't move my arm and i was spasming out and i thought that was just the mes- medication but my body was like i would have shivers it was Whoa. it was such it was a hectic experience and i had about 10 percent of blood left in the shoulder which was so lucky because i could have just died because it was not attached to anything it was literally sitting in place so he, we went in he operated hold on stop okay you're implying that if shit went bad and it continued and you lost that blood supply could you have lost your arm uh no i don't think i could have lost my arm but i would have had to have a metal shot like like how old people get like their hip replaced and they have a metal hip oh. i would have had a metal i would have had a metal shoulder damn keep going yeah and so um Whew. and so you know we operated it put the plate in and then it was a huge like physical journey to you know get the shoulder back right it was like i became so skinny i was so weak i could barely do anything with with the arm and you know it was that experience that was really like a big a big wow you know moment that big curveball where yeah um it lit you know it, it lit like that sort of spark to you know start getting better at different aspects of the games but what happened was was not necessarily like that was the big start of it but it was the consecutive moments that happened after because i had two more injuries which were completely unrelated to the shoulder that just set me back pretty much for about like two years of um not training on snow and recovering i was rehabbing for two years it wasn't it wasn't i didn't i wasn't i rushed the rehab process and i did the same injury no three different things shoulder got that right so that was april 2016 then it goes to 2017 and i'm getting on snow in june over in the u.s which was summer there but they there was a summer camp that i was at um which was you know supposed to get me back and get me right again for the australian season so i missed the 2017 northern winter which runs over our summer was over in the u.s doing some training last day in a freak accident I was standing and then this um, this skier came in who was out of control and like cleaned up the back of my leg and my foot was planted in the ground and he came in on from the side and I I ruptured 
I dislocated my kneecap, but ruptured the, um, oh, I forget the technical name. It was like a mild tear of the MCL, but there was, there's a ligament that attaches the kneecap to the MCL and that was completely ruptured. And so, you know, then there was that, which was about 10, 12 weeks of rehab to get right, get that strong again. It was either going for surgery or not going for surgery. It was really like a, it was a, you know, you could like take the perfect road and have it like working perfectly or you know just start getting physically right again and get back but i wanted to get back for the end of the season which and it has provided no issues which so you know that was it was the right call don't go don't go under the knife just start rehabbing because it was especially for my sport where i'm not changing direction in terms of like how a basketball would yeah you're locked in a boot correct and there's not like this you know sudden lateral lateral cuts and and accelerations and deceleration no i'm moving up and down on the board um and so it was really, you know, going to be no issue. But then I got back to, and it was the last race of the season, 2017, September, on the training day. And I fell and broke my wrist, shattered my wrist. And so I remember coming, getting off the hill after being in the, like the doctors and just, I was, yeah, what, 17, just bawling my eyes out. Like, like just so emotional, crying the whole time, like, like, what the fuck is going on you know like shoulder knee wrist how is this possibly happening all within like weeks of each other like shoulder first get back on snow i'm on snow for two weeks bang then goes the knee 12 weeks go by right at the end of the season on snow for three days break my wrist and then it's like what like what is happening you know and it was just the biggest like that 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 two-year period year and a half period was like the it was the biggest um i don't know i guess yeah arsenal fire moment where it was it was like a it was like an emotional war with myself at first and then it was a really good learning platform to to get back in because i was put pretty far behind from the group of like competitors i was with it that at that stage who were obviously getting more advanced and better because they kept on training and i'm stuck rehabbing the whole time um but that led me to woodford's led me to christian and it led me to yeah we're pretty much where i am to get today and you know and my physical part of the game is i think is very you know very strong and like working here and and doing the gym work um as a result of that well you know huge ticks in my uh athletic jigsaw puzzle so you know it's about putting putting pieces in to make your whole whole blueprint but yeah you know that was that part of the youth like the, you know my like starting career whatever you want to call it was uh yeah it was hectic but you know i'm better for it and yeah it just it just was part of it was a good part good you know space to be in to then learn and like and and to keep going and just to you know just to push through it and really really reinforce the love i had for the sport because like you know i wouldn't have come back to it had i not thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it because i tell you what i was not bloody enjoying rehabbing the whole time and getting injured but yeah so what what stopped you from quitting because that's a moment that people just hang it up love of the game yeah love of the game of two things two things the desire to achieve the best I can in the sport to get to the highest level possible. Um, that was one thing. And then the second thing was just, was the love, love of the game, love of the sport. Cause I think that's, that's the key. That's like, if you're going to be successful, you got to love what you do. And I, I did, even though like it, I had 18 months of it, like I was just horrible experience from race, being a competitive snowboarder, like getting injured and these injuries. It's like, what the fuck? And you know, not being able to train, I just started like, I just hated, I just hated, not being able to do what I wanted to do. But you know, it, it, yeah, I loved it still. So, and yeah, it's led me to this, and then now it's not necessarily a physical thing, but it's, yeah, it's now it's a mental thing, and that's just part of the journey, that is my yeah, athletic development. So. 
but no, that's what like bringing back to what you were saying. I think experience is, you know, a, a huge part of how you learn, how you develop, and how you move forward with whatever um, it is that you want to want to do and want to achieve. Mm. What do you think, man? You got you got challenged hard, man. Big time. Three major injuries in two years. That most people would have just, I'm done. But you, that speaks a lot to your character. And no matter what happens over the over your life, you transcending Snowboard Cross, that you know you have the capabilities within you to be resilient, to bounce back like a spring. And once you develop that integrity and that confidence in, in your in your mental resolve, you're unbeatable. I think so and yeah that's that's what i'm aspiring to do so good for you man so we kind of come full circle like now that it's like what's next yeah. like when do you the actually mountains that they said that the the snow season they're going to open yeah june 22nd uh they've been given the all clear so that's exciting um because you can't go international right now. No, I haven't heard from Can my... You? Oh, maybe... No, no, you can't. No. I don't know where you would go. No mountains are open anywhere. No one's open. Um, so, yeah, June 22nd is the start date. So, looking forward to that. Um, I haven't heard from my like home mountain, so the mountain I go to, Hotham, they haven't said anything, but I know Bull, Mount Bull is opening, so... At least, to, at least to get the all clear that the se- ski season can occur is huge. Because um, there was a period of time where it's like, well, I don't know if, even know if it's going to be on. But yeah, it is. So excited, looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, can't wait to get, get to get back back into it. Yeah, man. Well, it's going to be time. end of the month. You'll be able to get on the mountain. Is mm. that is that yep. as, as like as soon as they're open, you plan to get there? Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. Once they're open, I want to want to get you know get into it it's it's like it's like not being hot it's not being it's like not being able to play basketball pick up a ball for a couple of months compete you, you can't you can't pick up ball you can't even shoot a hoop you can't you know you can do similar things but like you can't actually do you can't yeah, actually snowball yours is a special sport because you need a mountain so that's yeah. where living up on mountains help right yeah but then seasons are hemisphere dependent so tell me what the best snowboarders do tell me what if you had it your way, is this kind of the best schedule? Like, all right, winter, Southern Hemisphere, I use all those mountains. Then the weather heats up, then I go Northern Hemisphere. And then I just spend like majority of my year up and down. Is that the ideal? Yeah, I mean, we're pretty lucky in Australia that in the sense that we get, as in the Australian athletes get two winters because we get our home winter and then we get the, the, the Northern season, which is what the rest of the world runs according to. So they have their winter season which obviously we're involved in that because that's the season. Um, but then we get to come home, weather starts to cool down, snow starts to fall domestically, so we get a bit of extra training off season. It's great. Um, yeah, so it's really good. Um, but yeah, like it's, you know, following the snow, doing training camps. Um, but it's, you know, it's good to have like the time off just to like prepare physically, hit the gym yep. with like, uh, you know, and then get physically better but like you can only do that for a couple months and then you start the each comes back to like of course start doing the sport you want to actually that's what it is do about. the thing yeah that's what it's about so, so when you go to that this is a means to an end what is strength and conditioning right of course it is it's not the end of course wise man it's one wise man once said that the old, uh, it's just a tool Christian Woodford shout yeah out. shout out man we're in his building oh, so this I haven't seen him in ages yeah man but he's still here he's doing his thing yeah um, but how long you anticipate to be on the mountain for for this season in Victoria? Are you trying to be up there for like... Yeah, whole season. Like yeah. I did the whole season. Oh, when I say whole, like it opens Queen's birthday, but then so this year it's going to open a week later. Um, it all depends on the snow and what resources they have open. So like if there's not many... If the terrain isn't like expansive and they've only got to select a few runs open and it's like school holidays... Um, I probably won't go up because it gets super busy and you spend more time standing and waiting than you do actually yeah. riding the board. Um, 
so last year i went up started july and then just yeah did july i had a good like month work before the first race which was on the yeah start of august and then i did came back to melbourne for a week just like re refresh reset and then just to get off the hill because you can get a bit of cabin fever up, up there um and then i went back for another four weeks five, oh, five weeks actually and then finished it off in yeah about mid-september but i don't know if there's going to be any events this year i've kind of expected they're not like i'm not expecting there to be any events because a lot of it you know we're like a lot of the internationals w- w- obviously can't come and it's a you know heavily staffed thing to run an event especially an international event like what we have um and so yeah i've like it'll be sick if we could yeah. get some racing in but i mean i think whatever if things if keep we going well yeah i think in a couple of months it, c- it could happen yeah but how do you uh, how do you support yourself while you're up there how do you afford to live on a well i work I, I, can't work remember. I work here when i'm in melbourne um do you just save up and yeah. then just pay for your, your yeah, rent s- yeah exactly well we, we i have accommodation up there so i don't need to pay rent up at mount hotham um and so it, which works well oh that's right your family yeah, yeah yeah um and so that's a huge bonus but yeah for sure yeah okay um i had a bit of a reduction in hours but I was, as many have yeah but you know that's part of it like you just as you were saying you, you said like you're saving 50 percent or whatever if you're yeah. on the job keeper i'm I, I couldn't get it so i'm, I'm saving 100 percent. you know right so what what do i need to survive you know I mean, I don't have many expenses. Many expenses. I'm yeah. young. I'm still living at home. Um, probably petrol is the only thing, but yeah. Even that, where are we going, really? Correct. I'm not driving anywhere. Coming That's, to do talking chimps. That, this is the, like, I think, what is it? Maybe the first time I've been out of the house this week. Really? They, I love that. Let me, let me I, get some people out the house. No, nah, I got it. I was out yesterday because I, um, I popped into work, but um, yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah. I'm not driving anywhere. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, it was funny. It was... I still had like half a tank left of petrol before I left to America. <laughs> and then I came back and you got the same I tank. was running on that half a tank for like, and that lasted me like three weeks. That's so funny. Because it wouldn't go anywhere. That's, that's like there a nothing, six month tank. There was nothing open. And that's so, so funny. You know, it's that. But um, damn. Yeah, the reduction in hours hurts. Oh, whatever. You got to adapt. It's tough. It hurts, but it doesn't really because I can try more and do what I love. That's doing. true. And, and, and to have all your income in, in one, like we talked about, yeah. have all your income in one stream is dangerous because that can get taken away at any time. Mm. And so this is like what I try and tell to like, I would tell to my younger self, I tell to like younger people like you, like diversify your income streams. Don't just put all your eggs in one basket. Um, don't just have one gym to go to. Make you have your everyone's got now building home gyms. Yeah. I've got a great sweat up, set up at home now. I've invested thousands of dollars. Awesome. Um, I'm proud of it now. Mm. And it gives you a fail safe backup. Um, but I wanted to ask I'm a, 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 look at this monkey chimp mind yeah. um, that goes all over the place. I wanted to ask. Right. Uh, That's why we're talking. It's like we're talking chimps. chimps. When. Do you anticipate the timeline to get to the Winter Olympics? Because okay. the Summer Olympics Good has been question. delayed. Yeah. How yeah. does that fit into that? So uh, the Winter Olympics run every two years. Uh, well, no, they run every four years, but they run every two years with the Summer Games. So our last one was 2018. The Summer Games were supposed to be this year, 2020. Um, and then the next Winter Olympics are 2022. So they're going to go back to back. So they alternate. Yeah, so they're going to do 21 in Tokyo. Yeah. Summer. Yeah. And then they're going to do 22 winter in Beijing. Oh. Yeah. You're going to go to China? No, I'm not going to go to China. Why? Because it's too soon. Okay, so two years is too soon to qualify? Yeah. Um, I've... If everything goes perfect from... Uh, so actually, I had a good, I had a good sit down when I planned out this Northern season. If everything goes perfectly... Everything goes perfectly from, when was it? Um, I pretty much decided from December. I'd love to get to 2026, which is in Italy, Milan. Um, Hello. If, if not, yeah. If 20, not the next 2030 one. and then 2034. I'd love to go three. I'd want to go to, I want to go to 26, 2030 and 2034. So with our sport, it's like, it's such an experience game. You know some of the best guys, and you know and girls, um, are late twenties, early thirties. Really, we had the, that's right. We had 
damn, you got a while to go. Yeah, it's such an, ex- an experienced sport to excel. Like if you're ex- like when you're excelling at the top level, yeah, it's it's gaining that experience. And so you know, I've got like I've still got time. I've still got time on my side. Yeah, you yeah. Do. My road was bumpy in the beginning. It's all right. Whatever. It's part of the story. What was that? Uh, did I tell you this one at the start? I think I did. Yesterday's left us. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. So that means the only moments now. Yeah. So you know, I'm looking. Yeah living now that's the goal um and then you know i've set out the steps to get there and yeah it's it's something I'd like I, it's my purpose yeah right now as we're, as we're sitting down and recording this that is my life purpose i want to i want to represent australia at the winter olympics i want to race snowball cross at the olympic level at the world cup level at the at the elite level and yeah get it done pick up pick up medals I've only one color along the way, <laughs> but yeah, we'll what see. a mo- we'll see what happens. I think that I think I love this because what a cool, amazing thing it would be to look back on this, on these moments. You telling your story now, yeah. twenty years old. We'll come back in a couple of years or whenever it is, um, and to see and reflect upon this journey over the next ten plus years you're going to have. That is so exciting. I like. I, I can't wait to see. Yeah. you fulfill your potential that's it so yeah so so do i and you know it's like like what we we're saying about michael jordan when he hit that three that game winning three which was his his um his light his fire i think like you know success on my as from my perspective and you know i'm obviously so young still and so people people are going to have their opinions or whatever but as i see it right now like i think you know belief and self-efficacy is huge Mm. and so i have i have like that flame inside but it's only about this big and i'm just waiting not 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 waiting i haven't i haven't had yet my like dump of fuel that just like goes whoosh and lights the huge the huge fire inside, but I, de- I, forget, I definitely have that. Flame. What do you mean fire inside? Like fire inside for motivation, inspiration, well, no, not and drive? Mo- no, not motivation, like that success. fire inside for confidence in, in success. Okay. So, you know, Michael Jordan was talking about, he hit that shot, bang, that was his that was his confidence he needed to go, yeah, I can excel in this. Bang. But you did have that moment on, on when you were um, competing on the mountain, like recently, that, yeah. that's definitely a big spark. Well, yeah. That, um, that was a spark for more s- the for more the mental side for yeah, sure. Yeah. But it's um like so that you know that you got to measure that subjectively. That can't be measured ob- objectively. But so um yeah like there's there's you know there's a there's a flame inside and I really want to you know achieve to the best I can and and yeah I I, I I believe I can do that as long as I keep you know the frame of mind I have now and put in the work and put in the the right work the right effort consistently and i think if you follow those basic principles mind you basic very hard to actually to put into practice um yeah i think the sky's the limit why not try just try see what happens you've gone and come this far you've been relatively successful at it so far like you're competing around the world why not see what the hell happens if you just keep going Mm -hmm. and and build a lot of experience why not? Why not? Exactly. You, you said it's your purpose. I'm like, that's it. Everybody needs a purpose. They need something to drive them, to aim upwards. And I think a lot of the people struggling now, they don't have a purpose, a drive, and they're trying to, f- and, and they, they're trying to find it or, or they don't know how to find it or they're not trying to find it. And, and it's like, if you don't have it, it's like oxygen. Like, like when you don't have it, when you don't have oxygen, like money, we don't have purpose, you know. It's it's a dire situation. You you are you are sick and down and out. But when you have it, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's like yo, you're full of oxygen. You are your you are your potential is can be actualized because mm. you have something to aim upwards towards. Mm. And I think it's going to fluctuate. It's not going to be as strong every day. No. And you were having this conversation very recently with Chris Kranis. As I think you were saying about motivation versus discipline, you're not going to be motivated every day or whatever. Yeah. Which is true. You're not going to have like, 
but the, you know you're not gonna ha- like the per- I think the purpose is gonna be there the the level of which it's thriving within you is gonna vary like yeah. I can tell you right now after my wrist so that was the third injury in 2017 oh, it was it was almost gone yeah you know it was it was very hard to find because I was just upset and emotionally drained and physically drained and it's like I, I couldn't fathom the fact that I have to go and start another rehab process and that I haven't raced and I haven't trained in like almost two years um, but you know now it's yeah it's you know it's back up and, it, and it's thriving but you know it just goes to show like just because it's minimal doesn't mean it's completely gone out yeah. and just because it's minimal doesn't mean you can build it back up again and that's something I think I've been able to do and that's something I think which is you know really going to help going forward into the future um, and achieving what I want to set out to achieve gotta go man just just regardless of how you feel like you said you're not always going to feel you're not always going to feel good you're not going to you're always going to have that spark but if you only work out and train and, and do positive things to your body and mind on the days you feel good shit you're only going to be doing these positive things a quarter of the time, half the time, because you don't always feel good. You don't always feel motivated or, yeah. or disciplined to do the thing, but that's what discipline is, doing what you what you are supposed to do regardless of how you feel. So that decision, it's a crossroad. Ah, oh, I don't feel like doing it. Ah, oh, I could do it tomorrow. Nope. That's, that's the moment. That's the moment to decide to do or not to do. Usually the answer is always to do, even if it's something small. It's a nice day outside. Okay, maybe today's not the best day for you to do a hard workout. Go for a walk. Mm. Do something, right? Keep that cog moving in your brain. It depends on what you want out of this life, but the more you want, the more disciplined and, and focused you have to be. You, sir, Ethan Wilson, you have a lofty goal. Winter Olympics, 2026. Those six years are going to come knocking real soon. It's a long time, but shit, they're going to come. You're 20 years old now. Yeah. Just four years ago, you were having all these... In- three, four years ago, you were having all these injuries. Mm-hmm. And now look at you. Yeah. Strong, motherfucker. Ready to go. Yeah. So, you got The days will add up. So, every day... That's it. Do something. Hey, the days... Yep, yeah, you're right. The days will add up. Every day do something. But I'll also say, like, yeah, make sure you're adaptable. Make yeah. sure you're adaptable to change because change is inevitable. Yeah. Right. Impermanence. It's this concept of impermanence. Nothing is nothing ever stays the same. Yeah. Ever. So, you know, and I'll give you an example, I'll go back. I remember I, I wanted to get to uh Beijing twenty twenty two. Hmm. As yeah, uh yeah, as a sixteen year old, I'm like, Yeah, that's the first Olympics I'm gonna do. I've just come to the, accept the fact that's not gonna happen. Why? Because I'm not at that level. Okay. I'm not at that level yet. Fair enough. But so we shift. Yeah. We, we shift adapt. the goalposts. Yeah, we do. All right. I'm here now. More I, now. Put them there. Good. I got more time to get better now. Correct. I'm going to be even better for 2026. What? Uh, and 2020. 2030, it. sorry. That's it. We we just you just keep you, you just adapt when needed. Yeah. You adapt when needed. And you know, I think if you can do that, it's so powerful. You just be, you, you I think you can live more life more fully. You can do what you want to do. You you do what you want to do with right effort and um and um you just, I think you be, become more free. You, you, you become at peace with yourself. Because there's, you know, there's, yeah, you're not, you sort of release that, that, that pressure of like, oh, I haven't achieved this, it's the end of the world. No. Put a line through it, rewrite, start again. Let go and begin again. Let go and begin again, well said. Um, I think what's, what's been a, a looming thing that we haven't even, we've neglected to mention mm. is, your sport is something that is not very well known. People know what snowboarding is. Yeah. But can you just explain the differences? Probably should explain this earlier between snowboard cross yep. and snowboarding, which you've been asked many times. Yeah. No, no. Happy to do so. Um, that's what I'm about. Creating awareness for the sport. And that's what I wanted to also get you on here to do. Yeah. Cool. Um, so snow. Okay. So we have snowboarding in general, um, which is just as it sounds. I'm sure people know what it is. Um, you know, pretty young, pretty young sport. I think it started. Oh, early 70s um, but now of what it's become today it's become, uh, it's become an Olympic sport um, there's a whole different bunch of disciplines 
So, um, what's a good example? Okay, I'll give you tra- like athletics, track and field, right? You have the concept of track and field, have the concept of athletics, it's the same, you have the concept of snowboarding. Within that sport, you have different events, different disciplines. You have what I do, snowboard cross, which is a mix between race and freestyle, but in the sense that there's no points, there's no points for style, there's no judging, it is just time. It is a there is time. There is a race. It is a race to the bottom against three. Uh, so it, well, yeah, you're against three other four people, um, and then big events like this, such as the Olympics, World Championships. Um, it's six, and it works in a round robin stage, and where it's like you have you have time trials, um, where it's just you on the course and you're against the clock, and then they rank you from the fastest time down to the slowest and you get put into what's called heats, which is your the, where you race other people and you move through, if it's a group of four, the top two, if it's a group of six, the top three, and you move through the stages of the first heat, quarterfinals, semifinals, until you have the final either four or six, and that makes up the, the, um, the, medal, the medal race. Mm. And, so, um, and then obviously the other places yeah, get made up from based on where you finish if you finish third, if you finish fourth, if you finish third in the quarterfinal, if you finished, you know, fourth in the quarterfinal, all that kind of stuff. So that's snowboard cross. Then you have half pipe, which um, is what Scotty James does. He's probably one of the most well-known snowboarders in Australia, you know, which is um, like short guys like Sean White. They were like the foundation of, of I think, of snowboarding. I think that was like the first, one of the first competitions was the half pipe event. And so that's tricks where you know you, they're, they're dropping in they're going from wall to wall outside doing flips and spins and all that kind of stuff it's a judged event um, you have slope style which is jumps and like rails so it's like it's a mix between like like street style um, where, you, where you're doing like grinds and slides on different rails and stuff and boxes and like tubes and funky different features you'd find in a street hmm. um and but then also included with um jumps at the end where you do flips and spins off and that's also um judged and points and whoever accumulates the most points on style uh, wins that event and then you have um giant slalom which is the other race discipline but which is no jumps or nothing and that's just around they're like they're called gates but they're like flags and you go left right left right in a set course and you race to the bottom against the clock um and so yeah um yeah my sport is a mix between that so it's a race discipline but it includes aspects of freestyle snowboarding which is um jumps and and stuff like that in the rollers and 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 you know jumps and whoops and bumps and yeah the chaos of racing with three people around you or yeah five people around you that is very well explained very succinct and that could almost be like the promo for what is snowboard cross yeah. 101 yeah ethan wilson there you go like um that's that's perfect and i know you got you're beginning your own documentation of all your whole journey on your social media mm. um how are you doing i know you showed me a little bit of it at the start how closer are you to launching your own little snowboard podcast yes i am um I'm in the pro. I'm in the process of it writing. It. I I don't know. So it's something so new to me, which I told you about. And you know, obviously, I got you to um help me out with that. And you know, I yeah, I'm I'm doing, I'm doing okay. I'm still trying to navigate the works of like, not you know, writing out episodes and 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 what and talking about what to say and then and then putting it together in like a in a docu- live documentation. Yeah. But um yeah, it's cool. I've been I've launched a YouTube channel. So I'm gonna, where I'm can gonna, people find that I'm going to give myself a shout out give um, a shout out or yeah the name's Ethan Wilson um, but a lot of people are going to come up then aren't there they there they are okay fuck how am I going to make it specific um, Ethan Wilson Snowboard yeah Ethan Wilson Snowboard, snowboard I'll, I'll, how about this there'll be a link in the description yes there will be of this podcast correct to my YouTube channel boom uh, you can find it there there's um, I just launched a season my northern season edit um, there's tr- training a recount of the Finland training camp i did in november um and so yeah i'll be launching more videos which will also be documenting the process of uh yeah my my snowball cross journey 
Um, so I'm in the works of a pre-season video now, which will be, yeah, training and what I'm doing to prepare for yeah, a, exactly. a sort of season. The behind the scenes of like, what is the ath- athletic life? What do I do in the months athlete? of um, April through to July? For sure. Yeah. I think if this is any testament of like what, you know, I know you're, you've got the teething problems and just teething out how you're going to structure your podcast and, you know, what do I say? Oh, I feel nervous, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Bro, this is an example. You've done fucking phenomenal. You've told some amazing stories. I know. I find it a lot easier if I'm talking to someone about it. Like, yes. I'm good at telling stories and having a conversation. Yeah. I'm not so good at sitting down by myself and talking about it and then being, you know, do you? I think there's the answer is is getting a friend or co-host, someone in your yeah. field, and, and that, doing it with them. And that's the thing. So I need to. I think of maybe adapting um, the format of how I'm going to run the show for sure. Because then you can double the the potential reach when you have somebody else doing yeah. it with you. Well, I mean, it'll be cool. Like, like if I do that, I can have teammates on. Like, so when obviously when I'm overseas, it's like pretty busy hectic training schedules and then yeah. there's everything you need to do pre- to prepare for the sport so I have nowhere near the same amount of time to do sort of things like this but I think it's it's I have that's why I like this opportunity now because I have you know time to like create this content stuff get a YouTube going and absolutely and, and, and work on other sides that in season that just aren't possible because in season's very uh, you know you do your training your on snow you do your training off snow in the gym work on you know mental training then you do like video review sessions anal- video analysis you then prepare your your snowboards for the next day clean them wax them qu- equipment maintenance like there's so many factors that work in season and you know like which is good to cu- which is why I like coming back and having this three month period of just doing physical gym work because it can be draining like um, doing that every day but you know stuff that happens every day but that's just part of the process it's things that you're not gonna like you know waxing and scraping your board is like yeah don't want to do it but you have to do it so you just gotta just suck it up and do it you know exactly anyway yeah so it's good to have a break for that and you know get into other other projects like this which i which i really enjoy that's exciting yeah i like i like making videos awesome you know documenting what i'm doing and 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 the sport itself and bringing exposure and and awareness to that from uh for an Australian audience. Look, like I said to you privately, is that there is no reason why you can't be the poster boy um, for Australian snowboard cross and be the Sean White of Australia. Well, actually, that's new to me now. There's no reason you can't be that. Yeah. Um, I'd love to. It'd be it'd be sick, but yeah, you know, that's that's something I'm concerned about. Right, because the concern is the skill, the sport, and S- being successful. Exactly. I'll let. I want to. I want to let. And this is a good quote from the Jordan documentary. He said. He said his game. What he did on the court allowed for everything else to happen off the court. Mm. Um, and I guess the, se- the sense of it's the same way. Um, His I'm, game spoke for him. Correct, correct. Now, obviously, we don't have that exposure like the NBA has, but, yeah. I, control what you can control. Exactly. So, you know, do, you have some things you have to just do yourself. Yeah. But, yeah, I want to let, let my writing in the future... You know, speak speak for that and all the other stuff. Yeah, if it happens, it happens. But I mean, I can't control that, so no point. No point in obsessing over and obsess over what I what I can't control. Absolutely. Yeah. Ethan Wilson. That's it. Is there anything else you want to say, comment on, talk about um, before we come this conversation? And I and I wrap this close? up. I'm gonna all right. I'm gonna go with this for all the li- all the listeners out there. All the if chimps. You're, if you're still listening, hopefully you are. This is, what is the time? This has gone for Jeez. about two hours. Yeah. Um, everyone has that this masterpiece inside. I think everyone had the divine spark. Um, we all have that inside of us, and what I've learned is about looking in, chipping away to find that that masterpiece, that inner that inner divine spark that we all have and I'm, I'm lucky to have found mine through sport through snowball cross racing um, and I think if you can find that you know put make it your passion f- and and do that to the best of your ability because I think you'll be a lot happier for it you'll love yourself more for it and um, yeah I mean 
I don't have too much like to tell as a, you know a st- as like a story I'm you know I'm no Michael Jordan but I'm I'm like you know to I'm no there's no proof in my pudding yet but I'm you know there is to an extent right give yourself some credit yeah I'm sa- I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying as a 20 year old kid um yeah fi- find find what you love commit to doing it and I mean hopefully yeah I can look back on this and say yeah it worked but yeah we don't know tomorrow's not guaranteed so just yeah do what you want do what you do what you love do what you know and do it to the best you can right here right now and the next moment will become clear Ethan Wilson (laughs) thank you brother that's the best I can give you sorry no that was great I think I think I almost wanted to interject and say, how do we do that? How did you do that? How did you find that to yourself? As bad as it seems, through, through, through suffering, through, through life's curveball. How did I find that? <sighs> through not wanting to do, not, not achieving what I, wanted, what I was setting out to achieve and fixing it. What was what you said before early in the conversation? Something through suffering? Oh yeah, the only way out of suffering is through it. That's it. Ethan Wilson, that's Alex, how you do it. That's it. Thank you so much for coming on, man. You're this was a great conversation. Thank Your stories were amazing. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to, to come and do this in a couple of years' time again. Oh, I'd love to. Let's if, do it. If I'm lucky enough, this won't be the last podcast. Absolutely. Talking chimps. See you soon. Corona handshake. <laughs> Boom.